We've all heard the expression that absolute power corrupts absolutely. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Solomon deals a little bit with this idea of corruption. We find it in many different places in our judicial system, in our political system, even in our homes sometimes. But when Solomon addresses it in Ecclesiastes 4, he says, beginning in verse 1, Then I returned and considered all the oppression that is done under the sun. Oppression, corruption, all of these things lead together to make life very miserable for many, many people. He continues by saying, and look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressors, there is power, but they have no comforter. Therefore, I praise the dead who are already dead more than the living who are still alive. Yet better than both is he who has never existed, who has never seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Now, we must keep in mind that when Solomon says these things, it's from a perspective of someone who is trying to deal with the difficulties of life without a godly background or a godly perspective. That's not to say that Solomon didn't have that, you know, in his upbringing and, and early in his life, but when we look at life from a standpoint that removes God, these are conclusions that we'll end up, you know, leading ourselves to. And here he says, look at the tears. Notice that word, tears of the oppressed. We see so many oppressed people. We see so many people who are oppressed by, by governments, by strongholds and strong people and mean and nasty people in so many different ways. And he says that they have no comforter and on the side of the oppressors, there is power. Some, somehow these oppressors are using their power and their positions to make life difficult for people and that absolute corruption and that oppression, it's coming down to create tears in the minds and the hearts and the lives of people. And it's very difficult for them. We see that in the world almost everywhere we look. It was true then, it's true now. And that doesn't make it right, it doesn't make it any better, but it's simply a truism of the observation of life. But it leads Solomon to say, well, you'd be better off dead. And then it leads him to say, in fact, really, instead of just being better off dead, how about if you just never existed? Better to have never existed. Well. You see, eventually, this kind of thinking, it leads you to the understanding that while, yeah, those who never existed, those who are dead, those who were never born, yeah, they've avoided all the evil in life. But you know what? When we remove anyone from existing because there's evil in the world, and we say it's better that no one exists because there's evil in the world, guess what? There's no one left. There is no life. There is no world. And we've removed all the good people, the godly people the holy people. And so Solomon's conclusion, while it makes sense without God, we have to understand life makes a lot more sense with God.